Hello, BookTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is David, and today I'm back for another Poetry Thursday. You might have thought I was going to miss it, but there's no way I'm going to miss another Poetry Thursday if I can help it. And today I've got two poems to read for you, and there's a lot of discussion I could have about the poets, the poems themselves. I'm going to save all of that until after I've read the two poems, so those of you that are just here for the poems themselves, you'll be treated to a poem from two of the greatest English language authors that have ever graced us with, with their writing. Uh, those two being Edmund Spencer, who is sadly, sadly undertaught uh, to, to the point where he pretty much doesn't make an appearance at all in most high schools, colleges, uh, in any courses being taught, and that's a shame. And then Geoffrey Chaucer, whose only appearance typically is going to be a fragment of his greatest works, the, the Canterbury Tales. So I've got a poem from each of them. Uh, they're both, I believe, sonnets. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to start with Edmund Spencer. And his poem from the a book of sonnets called Amoretti, uh, which was a, a collection of poems written to a, uh, a woman that he loved, who, when he's writing these, does not love him back. Uh, he would go on to win her love and to have a, a life together with her. But you can see reflected in this some of the, the feelings he has towards her uh, and in some of the other poems that he wrote in this collection. Uh, some excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, but showing some of the deep uh, roller coaster of emotions from being um, rejected. So Amoretti 8 is called More Than Most Fair, Full of the Living Fire. So these take the first line of the, the poem as the, uh, the title. More than most fair, full of the living fire, kindled above unto the maker near. No eyes but joys in which all powers conspire, that to the world not else be counted dear. Through your bright beams doth not the blinded guest shoot out his darts to base affection's wound. But angels come to lead frail minds to rest, and chaste desires on heavenly beauty bound. You frame my thoughts and fashion me within. You stop my tongue and teach my heart to speak. You calm the storm that passion did begin. Strong through your cause, but by your virtue weak. Dark is the world where your light shined never. Well is he born that may behold you ever. So th this one is a, a poem very much in praise of the recipient, um, who, as, as he concludes there, I mean, it, it's a very dark world for anybody that never gets to see the light of your beauty shining. Uh, there are so many dark places in the world because you've never been there. Uh, but somebody is born well if he is able to behold you forever very, very worshipful uh, love that he has for this woman. And then we have Geoffrey Chaucer, the greatest, arguably, of the writers in the English language. And this one is called The Love Unfeigned. O young a fresh a folkes, he or she, in which that love upgroweth with your age, repaireth whom from worldly vanity, and of your heart upcasteth the visage to thilke God that after his image you made, and thinketh all nis but a fair this world that passeth soon as flowers fair, and loveth him, the which that write for love upon a cross our souls for to bay, first starf and roos, and sit in heaven above. For he nil false in no wight, dare I say, that wool his heart a holy on him lay. And sin he best to love is, and most meek, what needeth feigned love is for to seek. So that is the love unfeigned, and that is, of course, in Middle English, uh, which most of that you can understand without any 
need for translation without any need for a glossary or, or dictionary of Middle English. Um, but, but some of it might be a little foreign to the ears, and um, it, it's definitely best if you can see it in, in order to pair that with the, the hearing it, the reading it, whatever the case may be. And so that leads me to what I want to talk about. Um, I have previously announced uh, that in 2022 I'm going to be reading all of The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. And my original plan was to do that January through June, to, to partner that along with my dragging everybody through Middle Earth with me to destroy the One Ring across six months, uh, because The Lord of the Rings is broken into six pieces within the book itself. Um, and I'm also going to be reading the D'Artagnan romances along with Tony from An Erudite Adventure. So we're going to be starting with Count of Monte Cristo, or not... Starting with Three Musketeers and ending with The Man in the Iron Mask. Sorry, Dumas, Count of Monte Cristo, it's his best work, uh, but we're not going to be reading that one because it's not part of the D'Artagnan romances. But it's been many, many, many years since I've read Three Musketeers or The Man in, I in the Iron Mask, and I have never read the books that come in between, so I'm going to be doing those to start the year. So my plan is July through December to read The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. To start the month, or to start the year, there's a whole bunch of poetry that Edmund Spencer wrote, and so I'm going to be starting with those. I've, I've got a volume on its way that I just uh, picked up off of eBay for a couple bucks uh, of Edmund Spencer's poetry, his complete poetry. Um, I'm assuming, based on the page count, it does not include Fairy Queen. It might include some excerpts on it. Uh, I'm hoping it is a complete volume. If it's not, it'll be a lot of them, uh, and I'll be working to get the complete uh, poetic works of his. But I'm going to be reading everything Edmund Spencer in 2022, saving the best, The Fairy Queen, his six volume uh, adventure story of all kinds of fantastic and wonderful imagery and beautiful poetry. And uh, it, it's such a remarkable adventure that we will be spending the second half of next year doing that. And, and I hope that you'll join me at the very least for those, if not for the start of it. And as soon as I get that volume in my hands, I'm going to start breaking down a, a complete schedule and get that up and released for everybody. And you might think that that would be enough to commit to reading everything Edmund Spencer. If you remember from my Mooks and Gripes bucket list, that is one of the things that was on there. One of the ten was to read everything Edmund Spencer, and so I'm going to accomplish that next year. The D'Artagnan romances was on that list. I'm going to accomplish that next year. But I figured, why stop at two of my goals off of that bucket list and hit a third? And I'm going to read everything Geoffrey Chaucer wrote as well in 2022. And my, my thought, again, was to let's start with Canterbury Tales, but I think that, again, I'm going to push that into the second half of the year because of the other read-alongs I have to start the year and begin with some of his smaller works, his, his short poems, his uh, Troilus and Cressida and, and things of that nature, the, the Book of Fowls, and, and break that down. I've got my Riverside Chaucer at home. I'm going to, when I do my Spencer breakdown, I'm going to also break down the Chaucer in that same video. And so I hope that you will join me for one or both of those in 2022. And even if it's just me, I'm going to be having so much fun reading them, and talking about them, because I, I'm coming to realize that that's what's going to get me excited. You you know that Tom L.A. Books, uh, he has a wonderful channel. If you haven't checked him out, I'll have him linked down below. Uh, he He's going through Dante's works, his, his Divine Comedy, uh, one canto at a time, and breaking it down for people, and talking about each of them. And I have no opposition at all to doing something similar for Spencer and Chaucer as I'm working through them all of next year. Uh, I'm going to do something similar, not maybe not chapter by chapter, but breaking down Lord of the Rings as we're reading through it. Uh, and so I hope you'll join me. And even if you don't, I'm, I'm going to be talking about them a lot next year. And I'm probably going to commit to you almost nothing other than those four big read-alongs I've got for all of next year and 
my two book clubs that I've got. The Eclectic Book Club with Shelley Swearingen, which we're going to be starting Fahrenheit 451 later this month, around the 21st. If you want to join in on that, let me know. Uh, I can hook you up. We've got a Voxer group already started to where we'll be chatting about that. And then I've got a poetry book club that I'm going to be uh, kicking off here very, very soon with Aaron, Aaron Facer, uh, because my copy of The Hawk and the Rain by Ted Hughes should be arriving any day now. And uh, his just arrived yesterday, and we should be able to kick that off. And that was what I was hoping to, to be able to read out for Poetry Thursday, but since it hasn't arrived, I had to mulligan uh, my idea and go with some... Spencer and some Chaucer. So uh, thank you for sticking around. I'm going to keep this a little less ranty, uh, but I could do a full-blown Steve Donahue just diatribe, uh, just going off the rails about why these two authors should be read more and the, the value which they have in English literature and the, the great benefit to reading everything that they've ever written and what I expect that I'm going to find over the course of 2022, that it's going to be a very rich year in reading to go on this adventure through all of their works. So my name is David. Thank you for watching.